This morning's top story, a desperate scramble south for hundreds of thousands of Palestinians as Israel prepares for a ground attack aimed at crushing Hamas. In Gaza overnight, explosions rocked the besieged territory as Israel retaliated against the surprise cross-border terror attack last weekend, which killed more than 1,300 people. According to Gaza's health ministry, Israeli airstrikes have now killed more than 300 Palestinians since early Friday morning. Israel Defense Forces ordered more than 1 million people who live in the densely populated war zone region to flee within 24 hours. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin urged civilians to go south to save their lives. But the U.N. warned the mass evacuation could be calamitous. And just into our newsroom now, the Associated Press is reporting a top Egyptian official says that Egypt, Israel and the U.S. will allow foreigners in Gaza to pass through the Rafah border crossing into Egypt. That is big news. MTS Tayyip has the latest from East Jerusalem. Jeff, good morning. Well, the initial deadline for Israel's order that over 1.1 million Palestinians living in northern Gaza evacuate ahead of a likely ground invasion has expired. An Israeli military spokesman said there's been a, quote, significant movement of Palestinians to the south of the besieged territory, but did not say how many. Israel's punishing airstrikes show no sign of slowing down as people across Gaza wake up to another day of chaos and carnage on the streets. This is a genocide, not a war, this man says. On Friday, Israel blanketed northern Gaza with leaflets, telling the 1.1 million people living in the densely populated area to evacuate. An order the UN has described as impossible and would trigger a humanitarian catastrophe. Some did follow Israel's order to move, many fleeing on foot. Most are women and children, but it's a move which cost some of them their lives. According to Hamas, 70 people were killed in this Israeli airstrike that hit a convoy of families fleeing Gaza City. Since Hamas's deadly rampage across southern Israel, the Israeli military has carried out thousands of strikes, inflicting mass casualties. Adding to the misery, Israel is also now blockading food, fuel and water and it's children who are suffering the most. Hi, my name is Salma Al-Ghalayini. I'm 10 years old. I'm from Gaza City. CBS News has obtained this footage of young people stuck in Gaza. Um, these days, uh, they talk from us the electricity and the internet, the water, the food. My name is Dunya Abarahma. I'm 22 years old. We hope that we will have our simple rights to at least have a home and a house and be safe one day. But in Gaza, no one is safe. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, speaking in Qatar, says the U.S. is trying to ensure the safety of Palestinian civilians. Our focus now is on helping to create safe zones. But this tiny strip of land, just 25 miles long, is being bombarded by one of the most powerful militaries in the world. Israel is mobilizing several units to the southwestern region bordering Gaza and have called up over 360,000 reservists. Now, while Israel hasn't confirmed if it will launch a ground invasion, it looks all but certain as the death toll in Gaza only rises. This morning, the Palestinian Ministry of Health has confirmed over 2,200 people have been killed, including more than 720 children since Israel began retaliating against Hamas's horrific attack one week ago. Michelle. MTS Tayyab, thank you.